Hello and welcome back to my channel. I did a previous video about my best study tips and I realized that I kept talking about my study buddy. Tip number nine was to have confidence in yourself and in your decision making. And I realized that my study buddy and I made very different decisions. I'm so excited to bring you this video to show you that there are multiple ways to get to a successful endpoint and that is passing the CFA level one and two. In this video, I'm gonna go over five things that my study buddy and I did differently from each other and we both passed last week on August 3rd. I'll start with how our backgrounds are different. So my study buddy actually works in municipal bonds. I felt like she had a really strong advantage because she felt really comfortable with fixed income and pricing and interest rates. That was something that I wasn't very familiar with. When I was recruiting for investment banking, I had learned a lot of the formulas for WAC and the discounted cash flow analysis, but personally, I have very much goldfish memory, so I felt like I was starting everything from scratch. On the other hand, I felt like quantitative methods and alternative investments were a strength because those were subjects I was genuinely interested in. Diving into what we did differently. I'll throw in one bonus here. My study buddy actually had a different study buddy for level one, and I studied independently for level one. Although she benefited and really liked having someone to keep her accountable, level one I did without any help whatsoever and just listening to my own voice inside my head for all those months that I was studying. Number one, the Kaplan Word Bank. This was something that towards the last two months of my studying, I actually completed something like 90, 90%, 92, 88% of the entire Kaplan Word Bank. I felt very familiar and comfortable with the questions. I felt like I could answer them. At the very end, and after you go through every section, you also have review questions, which are really the same questions that were asked before, asked again. My study buddy, we will call her Christine. She, I think, opened the word bank and she never really did it. It just didn't work for her. She decided to focus on the Kaplan books instead. Two, my study buddy registered for the Kaplan workshop. I did not. My firm wasn't paying for it. I was going to have to pay out of pocket, but my study buddy, her firm was sponsoring it and I was super excited for her. Something that I know about myself I get very distracted if I have to sit somewhere for long hours so I said even though I could spend the money for it knowing myself I would benefit from having my concentrated study sessions and instead what I should do instead of the workshop is just allocate that time during the day and commit two or three days for full intensive studying instead of paying for the workshop and doing it their way three I studied closed notes, she studied open notes, which means that when I was taking all of my mock exams and doing any practice questions, I didn't let myself look at the formula sheets. I wanted to have an objective understanding of how much I actually knew from the material. On the other hand, my study buddy gave herself the opportunity to look at the question and plug in the formula. Because I wanted to have an objective view of how well I was doing, I didn't even let myself guess. I just circled the problem and marked it as zero because I would say, I don't really know that and I don't want the benefit of having probabilistically selected the right one out of four. On the other hand, my study buddy gave herself a break and she said, these formulas, I know I'm gonna study them and memorize them in the last week of the exam. Right now, I just wanna make sure that I understand the content behind the question and I'm able to apply the right formula correctly. It was a very different approach from mine. Four, I absolutely love the Kaplan workshop books and I'll tell you what I mean. These spiral bound Kaplan books, I got as part of the package because I bought it from someone without attending the workshop. I absolutely loved flipping through these problems because it made me feel like I was getting exposure to every single kind of problem that was gonna be tested on the exam. Of course, the full Kaplan books are more comprehensive, but I felt like this was a summary of the summary and I could get a really good grasp of the material just by reviewing these workshop books again and again. Five, we use different calculators. I actually use the HP12C Platinum and my study buddy used that more traditional financial calculator that you see everyone has that looks more like a graphing calculator. The reason I have this calculator is because as I mentioned before, I was not a finance major. So when everyone was buying those fancy finance calculators, I was simply using a graphing calculator. And my first introduction to all of these functions was through my Wall Street training. During Wall Street training, they taught me how to use this calculator and that was the one that I felt really comfortable with. Something to add to your CFA to-do list is to choose a day and to spend one hour on a date with your calculator figuring out its secret functions. Something really basic that I hadn't learned how to do was to store number values. Because I learned on this calculator, I wasn't going to replace it right before a critical exam. I just used it for the CFA level one and level two. This calculator is infamous because it has reverse Polish notation. So you might feel like you're doing functions backwards instead of forwards. I'm very happy to report that 
both me and my study buddy passed the CFA level two, and we're probably going to be aiming for a May 2022 start date. Just need a little bit of reset after that crazy exam and waiting for all these months and finally getting the results. As I mentioned before, when we study, it's very concentrated and intense. I'm going to be spending the next three months mentally preparing to take this exam, setting everything up, and then finally grinding it out for the last couple of months. So whether you do it my way, whether you do it a different way, all I'm trying to say here is that there are different ways to get a good result on the exam. And this corresponds to tip nine in my CFA study tips. You have to make choices and you have to know yourself and know what is best for you. Don't follow someone else's advice blindly and choose for yourself what is best. Hit the subscribe button to see more of me.